Welcome back to the Mauler's Punch in the Face video blog. It is so good to be back. And I'll tell you, I have been dying to weigh in on the issue of Alistair Overeem finally getting his day in court, so to speak, in front of the Nevada State Athletic Commission last week regarding the failed drug test that got him kicked out of UFC 146. And I got more issues ahead of us too, but I want to touch on that one. Now, where Overeem was concerned, there were few surprises with his predictably flimsy defense hinging on one Dr. Hector Molina, who's kind of like a real-life Dr. Nick Riviera, injecting Overeem with an anti-inflammatory that, apparently unbeknownst to the big guy, contained enough testosterone to get his levels up to over double the already generous limit set by the Nevada State Athletic Commission. Now, like I said, few surprises there. The surprises actually came regarding the commission itself, which swallowed the excuse hook, line, and sinker, and gave Overeem a punishment that was so ridiculously lenient, all he's got to do is wait until next December before he can apply for a license to fight. And some commission members even praised Overeem for the superlative delivery of a defense that's best described as a monkey effing a football. Now to illustrate how monumentally screwed up this is, I'm going to go over the nuts and bolts of the situation one more time, but if you know all this stuff, don't worry, it won't take long. Overeem failed what's known as the testosterone epitestosterone ratio test, or the TE test. Now that's a test I've taken myself, and it's used all the way up to the Olympic level. Unfortunately, it's also outdated and badly flawed. It's got a number of flaws that I articulated in an article on the front page of paullazenby.com. However, having said that, I have to add that you just do not fail this test by the margin that Overeem did unless either there's some sabotage going on, there are some real Lugans in the drug lab shitting the bed, or else you're having too much fun with pharmacology. And Overeem's complete lack of outrage at the drug test results might have been an indication to the NSAC as to which one of those three it probably was. And yet still, all those red flags escaped the notice of the NSAC, and they gave him a punishment that basically amounts to the equivalent of a one-game suspension. Now come on, can you possibly be this obtuse commission members? You people are captains of industry, your lawyers, your corporate executives, you are not stupid people. And yet you apparently can't see through a defense so flimsy, it came across as if Team Overeem forgot it was due until the night before the hearing. You know what? I'm just going to come out and say it. If you keep your current position of being not just lenient on drug offenders, but also miles behind the curve in your apparent knowledge about those drugs, well then you people are making a tacit statement that you don't really care about who's roiding in the state of Nevada. Because let's be honest, if you can't deal with a guy who not only reportedly tried to duck two of your drug tests, but also went from this to this in the space of five years while fighting mainly in non-drug tested organizations, well then, lady and gentlemen of the NSAC, you're not really trying. Man, it feels good to get that off my chest. And now, moving on, I do have to talk about a rather somber subject in the recent suicide death of NFL superstar Junior Seau after years of suffering what looked to be concussion-related symptoms. And I, I specifically want to commend the Seau family, offer them my condolences, and commend them on donating a portion of Seau's brain tissue for concussion research this is a horrible time for them, and it's a tough time to do the right thing, and the right thing is what they've chosen to do. So much respect to the Seau family, and if you want to learn more about concussions in sport, which every athlete should, get on over to the links page and check out Sports Legacy Institute, and specifically grab yourself a copy of Head Games by Christopher Nowinski. That should be required reading for all athletes. Now, on a much happier note, I want to congratulate my buddy Trevor Prangley and British Columbia's own Coltar, the Black Mamba Gill, and Gary St. Lion Mangot, all three of whom threw down and kicked ass in New Delhi, India today in the Super Fight League promotion. And especially Coltar Gill. I do a lot of bitching about fighters who don't know or don't care about the showmanship aspect of MMA. Well, Coltar is one guy who's always gotten it, and he showed that by ripping the roof off the place with the post fight promo of all promos, cementing his status as the number one superstar in the exploding Indian MMA scene. And while I'm throwing out congratulations, congratulations to Chris Molnar Franco. After years of public pressure in the, the province of British Columbia, he's finally opened a second location of his FKP MMA Academy. 
and he's going back to the place where he started it all. Chris founded and instructed at the first ever MMA school in Canadian history, and now he's back where he got the ball rolling with FKP MMA Port Moody. We're all tremendously excited. I'm teaching at the new location tomorrow night, and if you want more information, go to fkpmma.com. And that is the Mollish Punch in the Face video blog. I want to thank Fusion Bodybuilding. I want to thank Roots of Fight. Hell, I want to thank you for watching. And until next time, this is Paul the Mollish and be wishing you happiness, health, and a punch in the face.